Since colonial times, New Englanders cleverly adapted their traditional European recipes by using locally available ingredients, like flavor-packed wild blueberries, tart cranberries, and delicious maple syrup, just to name a few. Today I'll share four regionally inspired mouth-watering recipes. A maple custard pie, a beautiful nut-crusted cranberry tart, Boston cream pie cupcakes, plus another great tart using our versatile nut crust. All today on Martha Bakes. Do you know how many gallons of maple sap it takes to make one quart of maple syrup? Believe it or not, 10 gallons. And that's probably why maple syrup is referred to as liquid gold all over New England. Let's begin first with the crust for this pie. Use a little bench flour, spread it all over your counter, and make sure the crust is well chilled. And I'm constantly lifting and flouring underneath. You can also flour the pin. If it gets too soft, put it right back on a cookie sheet in the freezer and just let it harden up a little bit before you proceed. Now to get it into here, just roll it quickly on the pin, lightly and quickly. And I'm using a glass pie plate. These glass pie plates are really handy. You should get yourself quite a few of them because as you give pies away, they disappear. And I'm trimming the edges neatly, leaving an overhang of about a half an inch. And this is going to be pre-baked, blind baked, the old bakers said. So notice I'm just rolling this under so that it is right on top of the rim. And another reason for using glass is that when you bake it, you can look at the bottom and see how nicely brown it is. Okay, so now get that right back into the refrigerator. Now the next thing is to make many, many, many of these little maple leaves, and I need lots of these. So I'm going to roll out another disc, get it nicely thin. Okay, so now, start cutting. If they're not too warm, take the back of a sharp knife. So go like this and you just have to do one or two lines just to make it look more like a leaf. When these are done, put them right back into the refrigerator. And now we want to apply the leaves to the edge of the pie shell. We have one egg. This is the glue. And you can use a small brush like that and you just Put an egg wash all the way around the edge and on the back of each leaf. This will really help them adhere well to the edge. Doesn't that look gorgeous already? Now when you finish, put this right back into the refrigerator and chill again. A beautifully applied edge and now carefully brush your egg wash over all those maple leaves. Why do this? Well, it gives a very beautiful glistening brown edge to your maple pie. Now make sure your oven is preheated to uh, 375 degrees. One more step. Fold this parchment like this and like this. Point to edge. This will fit in, see? But better yet, go like this crunch it all up, this makes it go in <laughs> even faster. See how nice? This is an assortment of red kidney beans, black-eyed peas, you can have lentils, rice uh, works very well too, although it's not as heavy as a bean, and they fill every nook and cranny. Put this in the oven, 20 to 25 minutes, and bake until it is all an even golden brown. So here's the crust. You can look at the bottom, gorgeously brown. It is ready to be filled. And the filling has very few ingredients. One cup of real maple syrup. Bring this to a boil and reduce it till it gets a little bit thicker than it is. In the meantime, we need four egg yolks and one whole egg. Save your whites. So beat that up. Add one half teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of the best vanilla, a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Oh, this is the fragrance, the wonderful spice. 
Okay, so the eggs are ready and the syrup has reduced itself. Add your heavy cream, two cups. And if you were standing here, you would love the smell. It's so fantastic. Bring this back to a simmer. And now add this very slowly, whisking at the same time to your egg mixture. Warm those egg yolks. Then put this mixture through a sieve. Now make sure your oven is heated to 300 degrees so it bakes at a low temperature. Should be just the right amount to come up to the maple leaves but not cover the edge. Bake it until the custard is just set but still a little bit wobbly in the center. It's gonna take about 45 to 60 minutes. So here is the finished pie. It is cool and so now just take out the slice comes off very nicely. That's a very pretty slice of pie. Forgive me, but I can't wait. This is the perfect finish to any autumnal meal. Native Americans introduced the early colonists to uh, some indigenous fruits growing in New England. Cranberries, blueberries, Concord grapes, all indigenous to the United States and particularly to the Northeast. Today I'm using cranberries to fill a jewel-like tart made with an incredibly delicious walnut crust. And the crust, well, it's very easy because you don't have to roll it. You just have to press it into a pan. To start, you'll need three and a half ounces of very fresh walnuts. You can use walnut halves, preferably to walnut pieces. I just find that if they're still in halves, they're even fresher than if they are in pieces. I'm going to show you a new chopping technique that I recently learned using two or three knives held at the tip and by the handle, and you just chop like this. It Somehow it, it holds the nuts or anything else difficult to chop in one place. You know, sometimes when you use a single knife, everything goes flying everywhere. Well, this holds the nuts down and it chops in less than half the time using one knife. I love this technique. And you want the nuts to be evenly chopped, not powdery, but uh, finely. This is a very delightful crust and all the nuts can be used interchangeably. So there, I think this is fine enough. See how easy? Scrape them down. Six tablespoons of room temperature butter. It helps if the butter is soft. One large egg yolk. Save your whites. So one egg yolk. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Start mixing and add two tablespoons of sugar and one cup of flour. And that's it. And just mix until everything is incorporated. Very easy. And I have an eight by 11 tart pan. And this is exactly enough. You just want to evenly distribute the crust in the pan. You'll want the sides a little bit thicker than the bottom for structural support. You'll be able to evenly flatten it out by using the bottom of a cup like this. And as soon as it's done, just pop it into the freezer and freeze it until firm for about 30 minutes. So this is what the crust looks like when it's been in the freezer. Make sure your oven is preheated to 375 and we're going to actually pre-bake or blind bake this crust. Get it into the oven and set your timer for 40 minutes. So while your crust is baking, I just wanted to show you a nice little thing to do with extra walnut halves. In Morocco, they serve all nuts and dates on great big bowls of ice. And the walnuts just taste so good when they're chilled on ice like this with a little tiny bit of moisture. Don't let them sit in the ice water, um, but uh, just serve them as soon as they get cold. Very tasty and pretty too. And now for the filling. Place in a small bowl a half a cup of cold water and sprinkle two packages of gelatin right on top. By sprinkling the gelatin on cold water, what you're really doing is blooming the gelatin, softening it so that it will be ready to add to the filling. So stir this around. You can do it with your finger. 
Now, six cups of cranberries. Beautiful. They can be frozen or fresh. And uh, one cup of red currant jelly. Currant jelly just adds an additional flavor and some sweetness and pungency to the already tart cranberries. Turn on the heat, two tablespoons of cognac. Cranberries are tart, scarlet. They're grown in sandy bogs on low trailing vines. If you've never been to Massachusetts, cranberry bogs, you are missing out on a, a big treat. Also add one and three quarters cups of sugar. We're going to cook over low heat just to soften the cranberries and dissolve the sugar. You want them to stay whole, but you want them to be softer than they are in the raw state. Mm, looks so good. My mouth is starting to water. I love cranberries. Now let that simmer. Don't bring it to a wild boil. Just let it simmer gently, gently for 12 minutes. So here is the nut crust ready to be filled. It's a beautiful golden brown color. So now here are the cranberries that have uh, just slightly cooled. And I'm going to add that wonderful blob of gelatin and it will melt nicely into the hot cranberries. Make sure the gelatin is evenly distributed and there are no lumps of it anywhere. And now just pour right into the, the tart. Mmm, should be just enough. Isn't that a sight to behold? Chill for at least one hour before serving. For easy transportation, <laughs> easy moving around, just uh, put this on a cookie sheet and put in your refrigerator. And this is one of the most beautiful of all tarts and so very easy to make. A nut crusted cranberry tart served with a little whipped cream. There you have it, a beautiful and dazzling tart for any festive occasion. It's no surprise that the official state dessert of Massachusetts is the Boston cream pie. With its luscious custard cream filling, moist layers of vanilla cake, and decadent chocolate ganache glaze, it's pretty irresistible. And today I'm going to teach you how to make a mini version. Start with melting six tablespoons of butter. This is nice creamery butter, unsalted, with a half a cup of whole milk. Now sift your dry ingredients. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour. To the flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, and I'm using kosher salt for my baking, and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. The wire whisk works really well. And now you can also break three large eggs into the bowl of your mixer, fitted with a flat blade. Do you see that nice flat blade? And for most um, baking of cakes and cupcakes, uh, keep your ingredients at room temperature. And beat those up with one cup of granulated sugar. Just add it gradually. Boston cream pie, it's a classic American dessert. It was first made in Boston in the 1850s. It's one of America's most recognized classic desserts. And legend has it that it was created by the hotel chef in honor of the opening of Boston's Parker House Hotel in 1856, the same hotel from which Parker House rolls come from. So get that nice and fluffy, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Simmering the milk and melting the butter in the milk before adding it into the cake batter actually helps the batter rise a little more and produces a finer texture than you would get otherwise. Reduce the speed and add your dry ingredients. You don't want to overbeat, but you want to make sure it's pretty well incorporated, the dry. There, that looks good. And I would lower the speed and add your butter and milk. Have muffin tins buttered and floured and fill these about halfway to the top with your batter. This much batter will make 18 cupcakes. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And 
we're ready to put these into the oven. They're going to bake until they're nice and springy to the touch, about 10 to 12 minutes. And now while the cupcakes are actually baking, uh, we have to make the vanilla cream filling. And what makes this pastry cream easy is that it's really a one pot recipe. Uh, one and a half cups of whole milk, add three nice large egg yolks. Whisk those together. And I'm doing it right in a measuring cup. A quarter of a cup plus two tablespoons of sugar, which equals six tablespoons of sugar altogether. Add three tablespoons of cornstarch. Nice level tablespoons. Lovely. And this can just be dumped right into your saucepan with a nice pinch of salt. Mm, dusty. And now add your milk and eggs. Whisk that all together. We have one and a half tablespoons of butter. We can just add that. Cook over a medium heat until it comes to a boil. Once this comes to a boil, let it boil for one whole minute. And the reason it has to come to a boil is because the cornstarch, which is the thickening agent for this uh, lovely pastry cream, doesn't activate, doesn't do its thickening until it reaches at least 203 degrees. And while cornstarch thickens as it heats, it also sets as it cools. Mm, here it goes. Can you see how it's thickened up? You want this to be very smooth. So just put it through our strainer. And it's best to use a flexible rubber scraper to push through a strainer like this. First, scrape off your spatula, and then don't forget to scrape off the bottom. Because look how much is there. And it's all smooth and silky. Now stir in three quarters of a teaspoon of your best vanilla. Now before this will go into our cupcakes, we are going to let this cool. We don't want a skin forming on the top, which might happen. So cover with a piece of plastic wrap. Just put the plastic wrap right down on the surface. And this will have to chill for two hours. So here are the cupcakes, 10 minutes exactly. Let them sit in the pan for another 10 minutes and then remove to a rack to cool completely. It's so nice and all almost uniform, except for that little one. Now the chocolate ganache. I'm heating a half a cup of heavy cream to add to four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, very finely chopped, a pinch of salt, pour the heavy cream over the chocolate. This will melt the chocolate. We're also going to add two teaspoons of light corn syrup. And just whisk this slowly. You do want it to be smooth and shiny. So now, assemble the Boston Cream Pie Cupcakes. Cut the cupcakes in half with a serrated knife, as I am doing, and try to be neat. And I have the cupcakes on a rack on a cookie sheet. So if there's any drips, it'll just go right on the sheet. There, they're all cut. Whip the pastry cream with a whisk. You don't want it lumpy, you want it nice and smooth. You'll need a serving platter. This pedestal will be very nice. Now, take the top off, put a nice amount of pastry cream in the middle, and cover. Just a heaping tablespoon will do. Don't be skimpy. And then a little bit of the ganache on top. There is your Boston cream pie cupcake. And I think no matter how many I make, there won't be any left. Joining me today from our test kitchen is Thomas Joseph, who came up with a very great idea of combining our delicious walnut press and crust I love this crust, I love this tart. The crisp crust actually gets a really surprise crunch from ground walnuts, as you uh, have seen with the cranberry and the 
tangy buttermilk custard that fills the shell is a perfect complement to the abundance of sweet, plump blueberries scattered all over the top. So the filling, the buttermilk yes. filling, is it a custard or a? It's similar to a custard. It's more like a panna cotta. Oh, so okay. it has, it's, it's, it uses gelatin. So two teaspoons of powdered gelatin, and you have to bloom this over some cold water here. So this is two tablespoons of cold water. You want to let this sit now so that the, uh, the gelatin absorbs the water. Uh, which will make it easier to dissolve in okay. the in the hot cream here. So in this pot, we're going to add one cup of heavy cream. And sugar. And sugar. Yes, and we need six tablespoons of sugar. And I'll add the quarter teaspoon of coarse salt. So the sugar, Martha, has, has dissolved here okay, and the salt. Good. And I think we can add our gelatin, which has bloomed nicely. Okay. And then this just needs to dissolve fully in the hot liquid. You want to make sure, of course, whenever you're using gelatin, that you do not bring it to a boil because that will right. ruin the thickening potential of the gelatin. And then this needs to cool down to at least room temperature before you add the buttermilk, otherwise okay. you risk this separating. And where does the lemon go? So you can add um, the lemon just for a, so a little bit more acidity into the buttermilk. It's okay. about two tablespoons, which depending on the size of your lemons, it can either be you know a half of a lemon or you might need a full one. Sometimes those lemons are really dry. Okay, so that's good. And this is a, a nine inch? This is actually, it's a 10 inch, oh, a ten uh, inch. fluted okay. tart pan, again, with a removable bottom to get the tart out in one nice piece without breaking it. And you add the buttermilk when that's cooled? When this is cooled. Oh, okay. So why don't we set that aside to cool and we have a substitute. So this is nice and room temperature, you can see it's thickened up a little bit. And then our acidified, extra acidified buttermilk. I love buttermilk. I can yeah. just drink it and drink it. Oh yeah. Better than real milk. No, it's great because yes. it has that tanginess. Yeah. And this just gets mixed together. When do the blueberries go on? So this, after it sets? It needs to set partially. Um, and then the blueberries go on top. This way the blueberries sink in slightly to, okay. um, to the custard. And with that much gelatin, it probably thickens quite rapidly. Yeah, it takes about 15 to oh, maybe 25 minutes. In the fridge. In the fridge, yep. So this is going to go right in. So here's the buttermilk. So it's almost set, not quite. So not it's quite, still, yes. It's still a little shaky. Yes, a little jiggly. So right. um, now we place the blueberries, and you want to do this kind of gently, and you want to scatter them about. They will sink in slightly to the buttermilk mixture, but that's nice because then when you cut a slice, Every slice adds blueberries. Yes. Yeah, nice. And it helps to keep the blueberries kind of set into the tart. This is perfect for the summer because if you have really sweet blueberries, um, it really does kind of counter that, that tangy filling. Put this on your table for a 4th of July or a Memorial Day. Make sure your tablecloth is red and you have a red, white, and blue. Yeah. Beautiful dessert. Festive. Yeah, very nice. Look how nice. Okay, so yeah. that gets chilled some more. Yes, so this needs to chill for okay, so a few hours you can up chill to that. overnight. Should I show how to unmold? Yes, okay. definitely. Because we have this gorgeous pedestal and a fully chilled tart. If you hold the center of the tart, let the ring fall down on your arm. And notice how nicely it comes from the, from the ring. No sticking. This, that's that walnut crust. It's so great. And has such a pretty shape. Yes. This tart is best served soon after it's made, but it's so delicious that uh, there won't be any leftover anyway, so you don't have to worry about saving it. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time on Martha Bakes. Snip off the end of a pastry bag. Insert the coupler base, then place your pastry tip over the base of the coupler. Screw on the outer ring to secure. Fold the top over into a cuff. Fill the bag only halfway with frosting. Unfold the cuff and push the frosting upward to the tip. Twist the top to close. Secure it with a rubber band or a binder clip.